W-P-A-W, where do non-drug-induced hallucinations fit into the mental processes? Thank you. Well, you ask a very interesting question that I actually address in my book, The Future of the Mind. That is, why do we hallucinate, excluding drugs, for example? Well, it turns out that now we have modern physics, we have MRI scans, we can actually see thoughts ricocheting between different parts of the living brain and answer questions that Sigmund Freud could only dream about. We can actually answer and give definitive results for these things. First of all, hallucinations. It turns out that a normal brain hallucinates all the time. Now, that may sound bizarre, but it's true. The human brain generates spurious thoughts all the time. For example, if you are uh, late at night camping out and you suddenly hear something and turn your head, for a brief instant of time, you hallucinate. For a brief instant of time, you think you saw a ghost. You think you saw an animal. You think you saw something there, but close, upon closer uh, analysis, there is no ghost. There is no animal. There's nothing there. And so the brain naturally hallucinates. Or for that matter, take a look at dreaming. When you dream, you are hallucinating, creating whole new, new images. Uh, and with a brain scan and MRI scans, we can actually see dreams in formation. Here's how it works. The front part of your brain is your prefrontal cortex. Right behind the prefrontal cortex is your orbital frontal cortex. Both of them are involved with rational thought. Also, fact-checking. Your orbital frontal cortex actually fact-checks you and says, no, 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 that's not right. No, 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 that's crazy. It's a fact-checker. So the front part of your brain is the rational brain. But deep at the center of the brain is your limbic system, and that creates emotions. That memories are processed there, and when you dream, your amygdala fires up. Your amygdala is a very old part of the brain, and the amygdala controls the emotions. So when you dream, several things happen. First of all, blood to your prefrontal cortex is largely shut off. Therefore, you no longer think rationally when you dream. Second, your orbital frontal cortex is also shut off, so your fact checker is shut off. That's why you hallucinate. That's why you have these bizarre, crazy things that violate common sense. That's why you can fly. That's why you can talk to dead people. That's why you can uh, talk to the heavens. Because right behind your eyeballs, your orbital frontal area is shut off. But your amygdala lights up. Your amygdala controls emotions, particularly fear. That's why many dreams are nightmares, because that part of the brain that governs that lights up. And so you can actually see that because the rational part of your brain is shut off, the emotional part of the brain is on, that's why you can hallucinate and live the hallucination. You think it's real because the fact checker has been turned off. And so, for example, schizophrenia can also be analyzed this way. The left part of your brain talks to you. You're talking to yourself right now. You're saying to yourself, what should I do right now? Should I turn off the radio? Should I go, go to work? What should I do today? That's the left part of your brain that generates voices. However, the front part of your brain understands that. And it says, yes, yes, I am generating a voice. Everybody knows that. But for schizophrenics, the front brain and the left brain don't talk to each other. As a consequence, you think someone's talking to you. Well, someone is talking to you, and it is yourself. You are literally yourself talking to you without your permission. Now, that is normally called madness, and that's what schizophrenia is. Schizophrenia is the most common form of madness. You hear voices. Nothing's there, but there you are, hearing these voices, because the brain is literally talking to itself. So the point I'm getting at is very simple. Hallucinations can be induced not just by drugs. The brain induces its own hallucinations, either because it shuts off certain parts of the brain, like the fact checker, or because parts of your brain don't talk to other parts of your brain, as in schizophrenia. So we're now beginning to understand that hallucinations are much more common than we previously thought. So forget the drugs. Yes, the drugs will also create hallucinations, but it turns out the brain naturally induces its own hallucinations. And then the question is, why? 
Well, some people think it's evolution. Because when you see things that aren't there, it's actually good for you. In other words, our ancestors were timid apes. If they thought they saw a tiger in the forest, they thought they saw the outlines of a tiger, they ran, even if there was no tiger. But, you see, apes that were foolhardy and super brave said, ha, 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 every time they thought they saw a tiger. And sometimes there was a tiger. And their descendants aren't here today to talk about it because they were eaten up by tigers. So, in some sense, hallucinations were good for us because it alerted us to the possibility of danger even when most of the time there was no danger. But once upon a time, there was danger and it saved our butt. And that's why we're here to talk about it because our ancestors were timid. And so some people think that hallucinations are actually good for us to a degree. But when these hallucinations get out of control, then you have mental illness. Okay, let's move right along to the next listener phone call. Yes, my name is Derek. 